All right, boys, in this video, we're going to be breaking down Nickel Double Mug. Now, this defense has been really, really good for the past month in Madden and in NCAA or College Football 25. We have a full ebook on this defense in our school community. If you're not in our school community yet, I'd really encourage you to consider joining it. It's only $10 a month, and it gets you access to all of our offensive and defensive ebooks, as well as all of the updates through those ebooks. We drop multiple videos a week trying to help you stay on top of the knowledge gap in both Madden and in College Football 25. So if you want to get access to all of that content, you get unlimited access to everything for 10 bucks. The link is in the description below. If you want to sign up for that, we are in the Jets defensive playbook. The reason I like the Jets playbook is it has the nickel double mug. It also has the nickel wide, uh, which is kind of a, a different variation of that. It has 4-3 over, which we also have a defensive ebook on in our school community. And it has dollar or dime 3-2, which is super good for pass heavy offenses. And that being said, I want to just get into nickel double mug defense and give you kind of a little bit of a breakdown on this and explain why this defense is the clear cut number one defense pretty much unanimously in the game in both college football 25 and in Madden 25. And uh, we're going to be using Madden to teach this from so mid blitz zero. And uh, that's the player you're going to call. Literally, the only thing you're going to do to set up the blitz is you are going to pinch your defense, uh, your defensive line. You're going to slant your defensive line inside and you're going to put your defensive ends in coverage whatever coverage you want them to be in these four blitz angles right here this is the centerpiece of this scheme and this is why this defense is good as you see we're able to get this a gap pressure and this a gap pressure is very difficult for your opponent to deal with what makes this a gap pressure super special in my opinion is it's very difficult to send five out in this off or against this defense. And so they're going to consistently be wanting to block a running back. The problem is when they consistently want to block a running back against this defense, even if you're only sending four, which is still a significant advantage uh, to the defense. Occasionally this four man can still come in. And then this is the other thing that really happens a lot that is important to touch on is what you just saw from that middle linebacker. So what you're going to see right here is that this middle linebacker is able to come in the A-gap a lot of times. And when he shoots through the A-gap, that running back is oftentimes going to pick him up. And that's a one-on-one, -on -one, a quick shed happens all the time in this defense. And this is why... You know, pressure in Madden is all, is the centerpiece, the foundation, the fundamental thing of any good defense ever has been pressure, right? You can literally look over the last 10 years and there has been a blitz or a defense that has defined the meta in this game. This is so important to understand because if you don't, don't have the ability to get pressure, in my opinion, you really don't have the ability to play competitive, effective defense at the highest level. So this is super, super important. This is why literally every single player in this game that really has, you know, knows what they're doing defensively is either in pretty much this defense or dollar for the most part. That's what you're seeing. Um, and, and like I said, we're breaking down this one today. So you see how good this is. Now, occasionally what we can do is we can ramp the pressure up. So we're going to now send six off of this edge right here. And if we see this running back block, we can kind of get down in here and you see how fast this six man can really get into the backfield. And at least at least what it does, if, if nothing else, this defense forces the quarterback to feel the pressure that is happening. He has to feel the pressure. And when they have to feel the pressure, there's so much opportunity for a fluke shed, a fluke disengage to occur. So that is really the centerpiece of the defense is this six man or four man blitz and you can do this from man or zone. So I'm doing it from mid blitz right here. Uh, I could also do the same exact defense. Everything's the same from this play nickel dog three buzz. This play nickel dog three buzz. You're going to take a look at this real quick. And what you're going to see here, if I can get to a play with five out, you're going to see basically the same thing. Now, when I play zone in this game, I like to show blitz out of this look. Um, just feel like it gives a better, a better pre-snap look. Pinch my D-line. Slant my D-line inside, and then I'm able to put my defensive ends in coverage, whatever coverage I want them to be in. So, for example, we could play a cover three cover three shell, right? Very basic, and it's only sending four people. So, you know, another way, if we wanted to do it, you know, like this, for example, we could put this guy in the purple, we could shade underneath, and then we could use this vert hook. If we want, I personally think it's the best. This defense is best when you're using a DN, in my opinion. Um, and, and you're going to see here again, we get that four man, we get that disengage. It doesn't come in every single time. 
but it only does, it doesn't have to. It only has to come in a couple of times a game. Um, if we wanted to, another thing we could do is we could kind of close this backside like this, and we could use her on the strong side as well. So, you know, it doesn't just have to be backside user. You could use her over here, and you see there we get that four-man disengage. So the beauty of this defense is you're only sending four people. Um, you don't really ever have to send six, honestly. Uh, the only time I would ever send six is if they're consistently – one of the best pass protections for this blitz, I'll just tell you, is to double team. I think it's double team the right side. Um, and then, or I'm sorry, it's, it's double team left side. Half slide to the right, double team left side. I've also seen people doing it the opposite way. But it's basically half slide and double team. So if I send four, this is not always going to pick it up, by the way. But if I send four, this, this, this can block it. As you see, we get, good pre we get pass protection there. But if you think about what are they actually doing to effectively – block this blitz well they're double teaming somebody right so because they're double teaming somebody that means that now if i send the six man and this is really i think the value of the six man if i send the six man like this and let's say even if i send five but especially if i send six if i send the six man like this now i'm gonna have somebody coming completely free at the quarterback. i got two guys coming free so if they're doing a bunch of pass protection stuff, that's really where your six man becomes viable. And also, honestly, I also think that is where your five man becomes viable as well. So let me explain that. So let's say they're sending, you know, let's say they're blocking the blitz a ton uh, and they're doing this like half slide and double team here, but they're still wanting to send five out. Well, let's just send five at them and see if we can get this guy off the edge. You see there, we get him completely free at the quarterback. So once they start doing all these adjustments to try to block your four man pressure, you just mix in your five and six man pressures and that is why blitzing is so critically important to any defense that you are utilizing. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to get into some of the things behind the blitz, some of the things that you might not know that people do that make defense possible in this game, that make defense better, and that is really the adjustments, right? That is the mainstay adjustments to the best offenses in the game. Best offenses in the game, generally speaking, are trips, uh, are bunch, trips, tight and then typically there's some type of five wide or under center that you'll kind of see occasionally so we're going to be kind of covering those five main formations and you can apply the concepts of what i'm teaching in this video to whatever offense whatever defense that you are facing so we're going to first start out with bunch and i'm going to be doing most of these setups out of the zone shell um, i do like zone as a base more than man this year as of right now it's honestly subject to change because Man coverage is primarily manipulated with the stem glitch. And that is pretty much gone in competitive Madden. It's gone in a lot of things. And so man coverage does have some play this year, I will say. But that being said, uh, we'll get into kind of how I like to use this mainly out of zone. Okay, so what we're going to do to set up our, our main blitz here is we're just going to show blitz. We're going to slant our defensive line inside. And we are going to use her one of these defensive ends. Now, I think you get the most flexibility with your coverage if you use her the defensive end that is on the bunch side, okay? Um, I just think that gives you the most amount of flexibility within your coverage. You don't have to do that. Something that I like to do. You could use her this guy as well. It does kind of change how you want to play. So um, we'll start out using this guy over here. And basically what I like to do is we're going to – you never want to put these defensive ends if you can help it. You really don't want the defensive ends in hard flats. You would rather those defensive ends be in hook zones. They're going to play much better. They struggle to get to the flat. So we're going to put this outside corner in a hard flat. Then we're going to take the defensive end. We're going to put him in a vert hook. We're going to put the safety on the left side on the bunch side in a deep half with a soft squat, and then we're going to use put our user on a vert hook. So this is really effective, and the reason this defense is really effective is most of the bombs in bunch are going to bomb cover three to the solo wide receiver side. So, for example, one of the best cover three bombs in the game is basically a double post. Looks something like this right here, right? Well, you're going to see that this deep half is going to play that post once he kind of crosses the middle of the field, which is why you would want to run an adjustment like this. So this is one of my favorite uh, basic defenses for bunch. This has been one of the best bunch defenses for a long time. And really the secret to this is the soft squat on this left side because let's say that your opponent is running the play verticals. If you look at the play verticals, this is a really good cover two beater, but it's not really good if they don't have the running back on a flat. So here they don't have a running back on a flat, so I'm able just to let that soft squat match him 
and now it's up to him to make that play. I don't know what happened to number four there. He actually got roasted. Let's uh, let's show that one more time here. And you don't have to like you can back off too. You don't have to press if you if you don't like how press is looking. You know, don't press. You don't have to, right? But I like to, you know, kind of have a little bit more of a basic look. But anyways, if they go to verticals, there's nothing to pull the soft squat down. And so that soft squat will oftentimes match is all I'm trying to show you. And you can shade outside if you want that deep half to play a little bit more uh, to the left. Now, another coverage that I really like against a bunch, and this one is more so I can use her um, kind of essentially all – crossing routes from right to left so what i'll do is i'll show blitz we'll pinch defensive line slant side and we're going to stick with this um, we're going to stick with this cover three uh, or cover two look on the right side so the way that this is going to look is we're going to put a deep half on that right side safety we're going to put that soft squat i love soft squats this year i think they're really effective and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the slot corner and we're going to man him up on the slot receiver and we're going to drop this defensive end on the right side into a vert hook. From there on the back side, you're going to man up basically the scissor adjustment. And I would put your user in a hard flat because if you want to switch stick off of him, you want him to go guard the flat because if you don't, there's no flat protection. So this is one of my favorite ways to defend bunch as well. The reason that this is really good is because if they try to throw that, that seam streak out of verticals to try to manipulate your cover two coverage, this will really take that away. He has manned up. Mahomes might make a crazy throw. If I click on right there, that's probably a pick. But then as far as your responsibility goes within you know how you want to structure your responsibility in this defense, your primary job here is going to be to t basically take a crossing route across the middle of the field. So let's say that you're playing somebody and they run like verticals, for example. What you're going to do is you're going to sit here, you're going to get back and get on that crosser. That's the main thing you're looking to guard is any deep route across the field. Now, another thing that you'll get a lot is you'll get a lot of this double post, right? This is one of the main concepts of the year so far is really this double, double post play. And so this does a really good job of defending that as well. And the reason why is because we have everything on the right side quick. We have that slot manned up with a deep half. So the only thing you have to use her is the post, right? That's pretty much all you have to do. Now, another thing that you can do out of this, it's really a slight little minor thing, but it is really effective, especially if you're usering on the left-hand side of the formation, and they're running a lot of double posts, which is this guy on an in route, like doing something like this, right? If they're doing this, um, please try this adjustment out as well. This is another good one. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to do everything basically the same. The only difference now is we are going to cross man onto that solo receiver, and then we're going to hack this left side guy in a hard flat. This is going to help defend like the tight end drag from smash return, any kind of like underneath flat read. And then the beauty of this is on the right hand side of the screen. Now we're going to do what I call a box in one zone. And what a box in one zone is basically going to be is we're going to play that cover two coverage, just like that with the soft squad in the half. But now we're going to man the D end up onto the tight end and we're going to man the slot onto circle. And so what's a, what's again, what's our primary responsibility is really that slot receiver. If that slot receiver runs a corner route, he's going to run into that soft squat. And so that soft squat will play it. But if the slot receiver runs across the middle of the field or if any of the routes really run across the middle of the field you kind of need to be on that so you'll see how this kind of defense looks but this is actually a really good coverage for bunch and i'm going to actually show this a little bit more so in the replay so if you take a look at what we're doing here we have this tight end manned up which is a super underrated adjustment because we have it manned up from the inside and then we have the soft squat manning up from the or bracketing this to the outside so you see that takes that away the slot streak is going to be defended by the deep half. You know, you're not going to really have to guard that. And then you're obviously running back there with your user. And look what we're able to do. We're able to basically bracket and play inside outside leverage on this post. Now, let's say they ran this play verts half back under, and we did those same exact adjustments. Now, for our purposes here, I'm actually just going to spy the defense, uh, the defensive tackles, just so you can kind of see. Uh, what I'm trying to talk, what, what I'm trying to show you from a coverage perspective, I don't want any any random gap pressure. Here, you would put your user more so in a vert hook. You could even man your user up to the running back if you wanted to. Um, you know, I like probably just a basic vert hook. 
But essentially, what am I looking for here? I'm looking for anything crossing the middle of the field. So I'm running back. I'm looking. Oh, there's a crosser. I just take it. And you see how this defense kind of plays out. So one of my favorite ways, uh, one of my favorite ways to to really defend bunch. And uh, I did want to show this soft squat adjustment, and we'll kind of see how this plays out for you in real time. And I am going to spy those DTs again. So let's say that this slot, like let's say they run like Z spot which is honestly not something you see called a ton, uh, but you could see this with like a backside post or a backside in route. It is possible um, to, to get a combo like this, but you don't get this as much anymore. But anyways, that being said, let's say we, let's say we set up our coverage as I kind of went through in the, in the little setup portion, and we kind of arrive at a defense that looks like this. As far as our user is concerned, we don't have anything crossing the middle of the field so we can just let this go. Watch this soft squat. A lot of times that soft squat actually bailed back a little better than he did on that play. So really the main thing you're, you're vulnerable to is a corner route to the slot receiver, but it's honestly – it's just not really something that gets called a lot. Uh, another thing you want to do is if you wanted to get a, a, a little bit more man coveragey uh, with this, one of the other adjustments that I like to do – is to utilize a cross man safety like this onto that slot receiver. And then we're actually going to cross man. Uh, we, we're basically going to have it like this with our user manned up to the running back. Now, the reason we want our user manned up to the running back is if the running back, if the running back runs underneath, we would basically just switch stick to the middle third, which is one of my favorite things to do. So let's say, you know, I'll show you kind of how this would play out. But let's say, you know, they're running like verts. We see, oh, running back, okay, we're going to flick that joystick up and we're going to switch stick onto the middle third and allows us to kind of cut that crosser. So that's one thing you could do as well, um, just to kind of mix some man coverage within what we're doing. But these are kind of my mainstay adjustments if I want to use her on the left side. Now, if I want to use her on the bunch side, a little bit more of this cover three coverage is what you're going to see me get into here. So if I want to use her on this right side, it's really more of a cover three base. And really what we're trying to accomplish here is we want to play with this seam flat and this outside third and this three rec. We really want these zones to be central uh, to what we're doing here on the left side. So on the right side, really what you're going to see me do a ton is you're going to see basically a – essentially kind of a cover two, but honestly basically this. Right, and I'm just going to use her this yellow. I think this is pretty decent. Now, the thing I got to watch for is that cover three bomb. So the thing, the main thing I'm looking for here is if the post, if there's a post from circle, I got to kind of take that. So you know, let's say we're getting a lot of double post. You know, we're going to trust this three rec. Watch what this three rec will do. This three rec will play more underneath. I've got to take that post. Now, if they're if they're running that a lot, like if that's like a common combo that they're going to. One of my favorite, just super underrated adjustments. This is really good for double posts. This is really good for really any bunch cover three beater is to utilize a deep half. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to take this backside corner and we're going to put him on a deep half. And then we're still able to utilize that seam flat. That seam flat's really good for defending the C route. And then on the right side here, you could do a lot of different things. Um, I think a hard flat is perfectly fine. And then just putting your user in this vert hook like this. So essentially what we're trying to accomplish is we're going to take away the cover three beater, and then we're going to look for that corner route with our user. So those are some of my mainstay, like every down adjustments if I was to play somebody that was running a lot of bunch. At this point in the video, what I want to do is I wanted to get into some of my mainstay common adjustments into how I like to defend trips tied in. Now, defending trips tied in is one of the most difficult things every single year because the alignment is really weird. If they're audibly into trips tied in, it's a little different than if they come out in it. But if they come out in it as a basic concept, we're still going to be in that nickel dog three. And our main thing here is we're going to be showing blitz. And with the trips defense, from my perspective, I think the easiest way to defend trips is to use her, again, the guy on the trip side, just because we're not really going to be do we're going to be doing a lot of cover two here to the right side or cover three with a quarter and a seam flat. So I'll kind of go over that. So 
my main most basic adjustments for trips we're going to pinch the line slant and side and then we're going to take this defensive end on the right and put him in a seam flat we're also going to put that slot corner in a seam flat the purpose of these seam flats is to match seam streaks then what i like to do within this defense is take this um take this outside third and turn him into an outside quarter middle third that safety on the right side i'm going to vert hook my user and then we're going to inside quarter this guy right here now the purpose of this inside quarter we're basically utilizing a match defense on the left side where we're going to have match coverage on this slot you'll see right here and we're going to get match from our quarter and we're going to get match from our outside third so in this example, obviously we get crazy good pressure, but this, this guy is in a seam flat. Watch. He's going to take this guy vertically up the field. He's going to take that away. And then this guy right here is going to be a really good job of matching that number three. The main purpose of this middle third is a tight end seam streak or any deep post from that outside receiver. Now that outside third will match that, but it can get beat to the inside a little bit. But in general, this is what I like to do. It's one of my base defenses uh, for trips every single year. This is a really good adjustment. This year, it's seam, using the seam flats they match. In years past, you used to have to just man him up. This year, you want to use those seam flats because that seam flat is going to trigger this inside quarter to be able to match this number three. So essentially, he's matching. He's going to be on number three. This seam flat is going to be on number two, as you see right here. But it's just going to be like this. And so... All we're really looking for here from a defensive perspective, and the reason I like to use a quarter on this right side is because one of the best routes in this game is the tight end corner with the running back underneath. So what we're able to get with this quarter is this quarter will always, 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 always defend the tight end, and you see how good the pressure is. Now, the other thing that this quarter does for you that is really important, so you see here, see how that quarter's kind of matching there, and then that seam flat's over here. This seam flat can make an easy tackle. If we want to man up the running back, we can. I just don't think you have to. The other reason why this is a really, really good defense is because what you're able to do with your – um, like like with, with like crossers and stuff. So let's say that your opponent is running some crossing routes and they want to go to something like a PA counter go set up like this. Now I spied everybody, but watch this, watch this outside quarter. You'll see that that outside quarter does not get pulled by that middle. He doesn't get pulled by the middle defender at all. So you're able to defend that really well within the structure of the defense that you have. So those are, that's one of my like most basic good covered shells for trips now the second good covered shell for trips i'm actually going to want to use her over here and the reason i'm going to want to use over here this is the safest one this is the one that's very uh very uh, not it's not going to get bombed you're going to have safe coverage it's not the best coverage but it's safe coverage so if we show blitz we're going to pinch our line slant inside and then really important you're going to put both your dns here um, you're going to put both of them in vert hooks. So both deep ends are going in vert hooks. The safety on the right side, this is the key adjustment. Put them in a deep path. Put the safety on the tight end side in a deep path. This is going to help stop 99.9% .9 of one play touchdowns in trips tight end. And then soft squat on the outside. That soft squat will stop the tight end corner. It'll kind of rally and tackle to the running back. And then we have the seam flat over here. We just went over how good that seam flat is at taking away stuff. So these are kind of like super basic, really, really good shells. And if you wanted to move this guy down a little bit, it's perfectly fine to do that. But this is a really good shell for trips. And it allows your user a ton of freedom over the middle of the field. You can literally just lurk the entire middle of the field with this. And what you're going to see is one of the best bombs in the game is this play PA crossers. And you're going to see that this does a really good job of defending that. So you see here that seam flats matching triangle. And then look at that deep half come over the top. And he'll basically just bracket that and he'll take that away. So these are really the main adjustments that I would use if I was defending trips. Another super simple adjustment that we do need to just kind of cover while we're talking about trips is just cross manning it. Um, just cross manning trips is super good. So what you want to do is you want to take the safety – uh, and you're going to take him and man him up on circle. You're going to man up the slot on triangle like this. I like to leave that outside third. And then on the right side, we're just going to play that cover two that we were talking about. And then basically we can, you know, have either if we wanted to man up the running back, we can man up the running back. 
I like just having two yellows. Two yellows over the middle. I think this is fine. Or a hard flat. Perfectly good defense. This is a great shell. Um, it's a very simple one. If you wanted to use her over here, be my guest. You're mainly looking for running backs underneath. And you see this just takes away a lot of stuff they want to do out of trips. So these are pretty much the main shells that I would use against trips. I don't think trips is as complicated to defend this year as it has has been. But really, it's, it's all about stopping the tight end corner. So if you can stop the tight end corner with this quarter flat, and then really, you know, this is why I love the user over here as well, because if I'm using over here, you know, I could even get into a defense like this, for example. Let me show you what the play art looks like. We could just get into something like this, right? And the reason why, why, is this, why would this be good, we could even man this D-end up on the running back, and I'll show you a super hidden adjustment that's really good in a minute. But you could man that D end up on the running back, and the reason why you would do that is if the running back goes underneath. So basically, you know, let's say they run, like this is a very popular setup. You now have that running back manned up, and then the other thing you're able to do with your user is you can kind of like lurk this tight end off rip and then just kind of get to other stuff and let that quarter take it. So kind of some 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 super decent trips D. Uh, and then the last thing I did want to show is this man up to the tight end from the back side. So when you man up defensive ends this year, you can man up a defensive end to a like a tight end, for example. Now, generally against trips, the one thing I never want to give up is this seam to the left side. That's why I almost always have a seam flat or a man up because that's the most common thing people are going to want to do. That being said, you know, in this example, because we're manning this guy up and we have this middle third here, this is where you're going to kind of need to get a little bit more, you know, it's, it's, you could get into this, right? Just get into cover two on this side. And the reason I like this cover two is I would probably honestly go with something like this, kind of roll it from the tight end side to the back side. But the reason this is really good is for this route combination this year where they're using a tight end cross and then they're, they're going to use this tight end cross and like a slant post. So it's basically like this. You would use the slant in this case, but look, look at this cross man from the DN. Look at the DN. Look at the DN. That's defensive end bagging Kelsey. Obviously caught it because I didn't click on, but that's a super – like it's, it's insane that plays so well against trips tight ends. So that's one of my like underrated – Kind of, you know, if they're running that a lot, that would be something that I would I would jump into. And I did want to spend a, a couple of minutes here just kind of touching on this formation um, or just tight in general. How do I like to defend compressed sets out of this Nickel Dog 3 Buzz? So this is designed to defend um, – everything we're about to show you is designed to defend compressed sets. Now, this one is kind of specific to tight. If you think about what a tight set is trying to do, a tight set is either trying to attack one of two positions on the field. They're trying to attack the direct like seam streaks from the slots or you're trying to attack corners for the most part. Obviously, there's other things – like, for example, with trips – you got the tight end corner, the seam streak. With bunch, you have the, the slot crosser, the deep post, and really the flats on both sides. So what is the main thing that tight's trying to attack? The main thing that tight is trying to attack is it's trying to attack the deep middle of the field or the deep sideline. So for this, what I like to do um, to help kind of defend this is we're going to get into here and we're going to go with our zone drops on 30 and our curl flats on five as kind of my main thing or 25 and five. But for the most I, 25 is fine. Let's go 25 and five. So we're going to go into 25 and five. and We're going to come out in nickel dog buzz. And our setup here is we're going to show blitz. I want you to look at where the slot corner is at as well in this defense. Typically, when I defend tight sets, I almost always I'm wanting to use her on the slot corner side, okay? So in this case, that slot corner side is going to be to the left, okay? So we're going to still pinch our defensive line, still slant them inside. That's our main setup for pressure. Then what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to use two seam flats, two hard flats, and two deep halves. So another big tip for this, deep, for this offense is bring these guys down here. If these safeties are not down in the box – it seems streak central. You don't want to have to deal with that, right? So a very simple defense that I like to run is we're going to seam flat the slot corner. We're going to seam flat the backside defensive end. We're going to vert hook our user. And then from there, we're going to do uh, two hard flats on our outside corners that are set to 30 yards. 
and then I like two deep halves. Um, if you don't want to use deep halves for whatever reason, you could uh, use a th use run the defense like this. And the reason why you might want to run the defense like this is just to protect if they have any wheel routes, because wheel routes can be deep halves late. But in general, I would really want you to start here. And if they just consistently just torch you, okay, we move to something else. You could inside quarter um, if you're really confident in your pressure. The reason you would inside quarter over deep halves is you would inside quarter in order to take away the seam streaks better. But it really hurts you if they have like a deep, deep corner or a wheel route. So deep halves are generally safer Inside quarters are better if they're just consistently attacking the seam, which is why I think the best of both worlds would be to do a roll coverage like this where you're mabling the short side and you're using the thirds to the wide side. Now, um, but these are my main shells for tight. And then as far as our user is concerned, we're basically just trying to get into the middle of the field. So again, what is this? What does this coverage shell actually defend? This coverage shell is going to defend this play really, really, really well. And we're going to force the opponent to throw the ball in the middle of the field, which is where our user is, right? So snap the ball, and you'll see we're able to kind of just sit in a basic defense. And what you're going to notice is these flats are going to do a really good job of taking – see, they can't throw the corner. Um, they can't throw like a true flood. We're lurking in the middle here to take away the running back route. This seam flat kind of gets lost. Um, but this flat is going to play that for the most part, okay? So that's why I like to go to something like that for the most part against tight formations because we're able to take away the sidelines, which is the best thing that the formation does. Now, let's say you're watching this and you're like, okay, but what if they start, you know, really attacking kind of the middle of the field within this? What would you do? What I would do against tight, if they're really starting to attack kind of the middle of the field, is I would still utilize that seam flat. And in this case, we're going to utilize kind of a roll coverage to the left. But the main difference here is I would utilize just a vert hook over here. And then what this allows me to do with my user is basically just man him up to the running back like this. Because normally the, one of the players they're going to attack the middle of the field with is the running back. So it would literally be, you know, something like this, for example. It's a real combo that you would see, okay? So I have this guy man up to the running back. So what am I going to do? Well, let's snap the ball. I see no seam streak. Okay, I'll switch to the middle third. Let that man up go guard the running back. And then if you look, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to switch stick to this middle third. Okay, the vert hook is going to is going to play this right. He's not playing it great here, but he will play it, especially if you set that hook curl to five. And then this guy is going here. So what's my job? I'm switch sticking here. And my job is I'm now basically taking away this backside in route. So that's one other method that you can use. Um, another super simple defense for for this would be to literally play cover four. So put all safeties in these quarters. And then you would just use two seam flats and a yellow like this. This is the e another variation of what we're trying to show and what we're trying to really do. I love quarter, quarter, half as well. So no, have no middle third on the field at all. And may, again, Mabel, that short side is really effective. These are kind of some of my mainstay uh, compression adjustments. The biggest thing with compression is we're trying to – take away the sidelines well while not not absolutely killing our middle of the field coverage so those are some of my favorite ways uh, to do that the only thing we didn't touch on uh, that I do like to do against compression okay this is like occasional but literally just play like a stock almost like a stock cover too so we'll put both safeties in halves bring them down this middle of the this slot corner is going in a vert hook with a soft squat backside we have a soft squat and then with this one this is where i would definitely want the running back manned up so i would man this guy up here and i'd actually probably use this the end and the reason why i would do that is because this is it's a more of a basic coverage and the main thing i've got to look out for is some type of like running back streak or some type of seam streak here to the right side i've got to kind of lurk that stuff so 
those are some of my favorite adjustments in terms of defending two by two compression or two by two tight. And now I want to get into everybody's favorite question. I get this question so much. How do you stop five wide? Cody, what is the best five wide defense? How do you stop five wide? And I would say that in this year's game, more than I've seen it in the past, five wide is actually very viable this year just because of how good the seam streaks really are. So how do you stop five wide? We're going to get into it. Five wide is essentially a combination of doubles on one side and trips on the other side. So I like to use a lot of trips concepts to defend five wide. That being said, what is the main thing that people want to do out of five wide? They want to throw seam streaks. And again, we're going to probably, for the most part in this defense, use the defensive end that is on the slot corner side. So uh, we're going to start out with everybody's favorite little seam streaks. You know, basically something like, like this. This is like a legit combo that people five wide players will use. Uh, this one might be a little bit more inverted, but it's basically a streak at the end of the day. And then, you know, maybe even just a basic drag here. But essentially, what we're looking to try to accomplish is we have to, the people that we have to guard in a five wide formation, the people they can throw, they are going to throw the ball to the most are the slots on both sides. This tight end or this third number three receiver, I'm not as concerned about him as I am about this slot out here and this slot over here to the left. So, how do we defend them? Well, Pinch D line, slant side, that's our blitz setup. And then really what I like to do is kind of that same idea of what we do against trips. So we're going to use a seam flat on this right side. We're going to use an inside quarter here. And then on this left side, I think the very basic thing you can do is just man this guy up and we'll throw a hard flat on the field and a vert hook. So the reason for these adjustments, the, the reason for the man up in combination with the hard flat, the man up will help defend the seam streak. And I would definitely bring these guys down if you can. And then the hard flat, what a lot of people will do is once they see you're manning him up is they will throw him in on a zig route and this will stop that. So who are we usering here? Who's our main priority? Our main priority is Travis Kelsey because he's the guy that's almost always going to run a crossing route. Now, as you see in this defense, and this is why it's important to understand your trips defense because you can apply it to your five wide, we know that in trips formations, if we use a seam flat, that matches this guy, as you see, perfectly. This third is taken number one perfectly. And then that leaves this quarter. And this quarter will match the number three receiver vertical. So he runs vertical. He matches him. So who's wide open? Really the backside crosser, which is where I need to be with my user. Okay? So this is that was like my, my favorite way to defend uh, trips because it gives me the most amount of flexibility with my user. And I wanted to get into this a little deeper with you guys and kind of explain why this hard flat and man up I really like. So what's going to happen is once they see that you're doing that, they're going to go to stuff like middle, high, low, um, you know, where they may do something like this. You know, I've seen this before. And again, these are your adjustments. So what's my user? I got him. He goes vertical. Okay. Now I need to gonna lurk back to this crosser and everything's taken. The other thing that's really nice about double mug as far as like a five wide defense is really hard to block. Um, they can't really block good blitzes. So when you have a, this is why blitzing is so fundamentally important to defense. When you have a good blitz, they're going to struggle to block the blitz. Okay. Now, the other thing that I want to show, and this is what ultimately will happen, is they'll start to go to stuff like this out of like a Y corner because they need man beating routes. So they're going to throw a corner route out there. They're going to throw a little whip out there. They're going to do stuff like that. Well, this hard flat, and this is the whole point of it, it takes away the zig. So that's why I like to use hard flats on the defense to be able to take away stuff like that so that they can't throw little whip routes, little, little Mickey Mouse, stuff like that. So those are some of my main my mainstays. If you wanted a, a little bit more of a simpler defense, four or five wide, just man up the slots with the, with the corner and the safety. And then now you're basically just, you know, and then I would just use a vert hook here and a vert hook here. And the reason why is because our main priority is to take this, this tight end. Wherever he goes, we take him. That's our main guy. You know, everything else is pretty much, you know, if they throw the flat, is that really a big deal? You know, it's not really a huge deal. Another coverage that I like that's going to be more bomb proof 
would be to run a cover two on the left and a cover three on the right. So it looks something like this. This is a little bit more safe of a coverage. And I like this mainly because that cover two soft squat will match a lot of stuff. And then the vert hook on the left will match that seam. So if they're just running like a straight, you know, street corner, watch that vert hook, he'll kind of play it. And then look at that soft squat kind of sit in that area. Should have played a little better than he did, but but you see kind of the concept. So these are these are the main things that I would do. You cannot man your DNs up this year in five wide unless they're actually a tight end. So because Kelsey's not on the line, I can't man him up. You know, but in general, this would be this would be something that I would definitely use to slow this formation down. Another another real underrated thing. Um, literally just man everybody up. So if you wanted to. You could go to mid blitz against five wide. And this is a little, you know, honestly, the little way that I would run mid blitz against five wide is I would shade outside over top. And then I would drop this DN into a hard flat and I'd manually shade that slot on the left into the middle. So the reason for all these adjustments is because I just want them to have to throw at my user. And my user is going to be in the middle of the field. So if they throw, you know, if I shade outside, they have to throw. To the middle of the field, which is where my user's at. Another underrated, like five wide, and this is more of a man version, but if you want to get into some of the man stuff you can do here, another really underrated thing that you can do against five wide is just send six. I mean, just straight up, like we know they're not going to be able to block it. I'm just going to use her right here. I might basically look at this guy and try to take him away, and we're going to get heavy pressure. That's another way that you could kind of do it. But in general, you know, I think the best five wide defense is a seam flat on the right side. And then if you wanted to, I literally like the man up there with a backside hard flat. The reason I like this so much is just because it's just hard to beat this. Um, it's hard to beat this for big plays. On that left side, you know, I would maybe man him up. And if you're not going to man him up, you know, maybe, maybe then you have that quarter on the right. That'll, that'll match to number three. So that way if he goes vertical, okay, I don't have to worry about that. I just take everything underneath. Right, so that's some of my favorite stuff that I like to do in terms of five wide. Now, under center. Under center is interesting um, because typically someone's going under center because they either want to run the ball or they want to throw an RPO. So when I defend under center, I normally do it out of a, a, a base man-to-man -man coverage like a mid blitz. And the setup that I like to use is we're going to show blitz. And the person I actually like to use her is normally going to be this guy. Um, whoever's the man up to the running back is who I want to use her most of the time. So in this case, Sauce Gardner, we're still going to pinch slant side. Um, the biggest thing that I like to really look for, you do have to kind of watch the run game. I would honestly literally start with something like this. Um, and the reason why is just because it's going to be really good against RPOs. It's going to be really good against RPOs because man coverage – generally is going to do a really good job at defending any kind of RPO. You don't have to press either. You don't have to press. You don't have to show blitz. You don't have to do any of that. You could just come out and mid blitz, pinch, pinch your uh, D line slant side. And honestly, just leave it like, leave it at that. Now, if you want to get a little bit more adjusty, hard flat, both the ends, I would start there. The reason why I would hard flat is it just takes away zig routes. They'll flow to the ball a little better against the run. That's an option as well. Another thing that you, if they're like, if they're, and if they're trying to pass under center, I just want to show this. Let's say they're trying to pass under center on us. This is going to holler at them under center. You're, you're, you're going to get screamed at under center. Another thing that I would really say that's also a really good under center defense is just basic cover two. Like this over here, you can use curl flats. I don't really care. Uh, the reason I would use a soft squat um, you might, you, you, you could, you could do it a couple different ways. Um, because I want to use her, this guy, it, it's going to make it a little, little different, but essentially what we're really trying to do is we're trying to get this flat out here, maybe a third, you know, even, even inverting the cover two like this is fine. Uh, the reason we're using cover two is just for the outside flat zones and they will just flow to the ball really well. And it just helps us against some of the under center glitch routes. There are some routes under center, that can just kill man. So that's where, you know, situationally, if you're getting hit with that, go to zone. Go to, I mean, even something like this, 
Like it's it's basically cover three hard flat, and then we just have the slot man up. This is a really good under center shell because that man up always takes away the RPO, which is what we want to. What's why does someone run something? That's that's super important defensively. Understanding why are they running what they're running? What are they trying to accomplish? Are they trying to throw RPOs? Are they trying to roll out? Are they trying to run the ball? Those are all things that an under center offense is really designed to do. Now let's talk about running the ball. So I would say mid blitz is not terrible against interior runs. It's really not the greatest against edge runs. So if I run stretch here, you're going to see that off. I, if I get outside, you see that it's it's kind of good. Like it's kind of good to run the ball on this. And there are a couple things you can do. The first thing you can do, and I'm not even kidding you, is you can audible. Uh, and you can audible. Like let's say they go to audible down or something and they're like trying to set up a run. Literally – just audible to, I guess I can't audible. I lied. Just spread your linebackers. Just spread your linebackers. Don't pinch your. You can pinch your D line, but I don't. You don't have to. But just, just, just basically this, right? And then we still want to use these flats if we want. But the reason this is good is because now I can just shoot the gaps with my user, and it's super hard to do this in practice mode. But basically. Your vulnerability, your main vulnerability here is going to be edge runs. Right, so if I'm just slanting inside, I'm gonna basically be able to shoot the edge run with my user as Pacheco just has the run of his career. Okay, so we're just we're just um slanting inside like this, and then we're really just flowing to the ball. But the main thing we're concerned with, and I got I just it's just so hard to tackle in practice, but the main thing we're concerned with is taking away the outside run. That's the main thing. Like, if we have to take away something, it's really taking away this outside run. You know, so I'm just kind of getting out here, trying to take this away. That time we're actually able to make a tackle. So if they're running a lot of under center and they're running the ball, like that's like the thing they're doing, spread these linebackers out. You could even put these linebackers in hard flats and watch them flow to the ball. They'll oftentimes flow to the ball and help contain the edge. The other thing that you want to do is you don't need to pinch your line. Um, pinching your line just brings the defensive ends inside more. Well, if they're running outside, why would we want more people inside? We want more people outside. So just by leaving the line spread, it'll help, it'll help defend the run. Hopefully we can actually show you here. But just leaving the line on default, I wouldn't even spread it here. But, but basically, you see, see how he's able to do that. Now, another little underrated tip about run D is con when you contain, if, if when they run the ball, you click your right joystick in. So my right joystick, it's going to make this clicking sound. That's what I want to do when, they, when I see run. So they run, click, 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 click. And you see it just messes targeting up. It like tell, I feel like what it does is it basically communicates to your defense that they are running the ball. So you're literally telling your, your team, hey, they're running the ball. You need to go like tackle. To me, that's, that's another thing you could do against under center with this defense. I have not really been killed by under center guys. And, and you know, there's always somebody under center. But another real big tip that I have for you is get into some kind of def defense like this. Something like this right here. This is perfectly good for the majority of under centers that you're going to play. This is going to stop them because you're going to be able to stop the run you're going to be able to contain the RPOs and you're going to be able to stop the pass. So, you know, and all we're doing here is we're literally just creating a cover three from a man look and then we're hard flighting the DNs. That's all we're really doing at the end of the day. And then I would put my user in a spy or if I can't put him in a spy for here, for some reason we can't put him in a spy. Okay, you know, we'll put him in a third or I'll put him in a half, put him in a hard, whatever you want. Um, you know, normally you're not going to really need to click off your user here. And again, you see now we're defending the edges and now we're able to take away the main things that they want to do in the run game. So that's how I like to defend under center sets. Um, that's how I like to defend bunch sets. The only thing we didn't really cover is bunch strong and then coaching adjustments and depth chart. So coaching adjustments, typically auto flip is going to be on. Auto alignment for the majority of, def of, of ways I play, we'll just leave it on default. Option defense on conservative, this will really help with option defense. And then zone drops, 
we talked about the tight defense, but I don't really use zone drops outside of the tight defense. Now, if they ever, another really underrated thing that I want to show you that you can do that's kind of fun is you can actually utilize this nickel wide nine very similarly to how you would use the, um, so you would come out in this Overstorm Brave play, and then this would basically be the same concept as double mug. So you're just going to pinch your defense and slant your D-line aside, and then you see here that we're able to do that. Now, the reason this is, this is a little unique is the linemen are at different positions. There are different positions, which means different blitz angles, better run contain, and then also you can audible to, like, match, and you can run cover four palms, and it looks very similar. Now, the way I would run cover four palms is I wouldn't blitz the linebackers, you know, so, so we might, you know, maybe maybe we want to do, like, user this guy over here. And I would probably honestly just, just call stock match. Literally just call stock match. This will bag some people randomly. It's super good. You still got good sheds, okay? But I just wanted to show, you know, how you can utilize that. And then if you have the same per the actual personnel, which I don't have matched here, but you can, you can even audible into that if you wanted to. So it's kind of an underrated little tip. Bunch strong. Um, the biggest thing with defending a formation like Bunch Strong is understanding, honestly, like this, especially this year, stopping the seam streaks is huge. You need to be able to stop seam streaks. Again, understand where are they going to attack and why are they going to attack there. That's so important. So literally, we're in this Nickel Dog 3. It's not a whole lot different than Bunch. See how the safety is in a good position here. I would get this guy down here so he can be in a pretty favorable position. If we think about bombs in general, they're normally to the right side. So that means I typically want to be in a cover two uh, to the right. And then I probably want to have the slot band up, you know, and then basically like this. This would be a, a legitimate defense that I run. And basically what I would do with my user kind of high low on this left side or just use the bird hook, you know, something like this would be a pretty safe shell for – uh, for this offense, you know, and then basically what I'm looking for is anything crossing the field and I take that deep crossing route You know, there's no reason why that wouldn't work. So a lot of our bunch shells are gonna apply. I really like the soft squat and deep half and then You know if you wanted to man this guy up on really anybody uh, Be my guest a lot of times this corner route Could be something that that's, that's a threat So manning up the outside guy manning up the inside guy and then if you wanted to, you could also run the defense like this. And this is also really good. I would probably use a quarter instead of a third on that right side just so it play corner routes a little bit better. This is a really good coverage because this guy will take the seam streak on the left. This guy will take the seam streak on the right. This vert hook will take like a tight end wheel or running back streak. And then really you're left kind of in the middle of the field looking for crossers, looking for high lows on the back end. So you see how we're able to kind of cover the entirety of the field within this coverage. Guys, I want to recap a couple things for you as we end the video. If you enjoyed the video breakdown, I hope that you enjoy our school community. Our school community is the best place to take your Madden game to the next level. And we've literally had these exact strategies and tactics and even more advanced variations of everything that I'm talking about in the school community for the past 60 days. Make sure that you're in that community. It's the best place to get better. It's only $10 and you get access to so much content, an entire library that's gonna help you stay on top of the knowledge gap in this game and a library that's constantly being updated and refined as the year continues to progress. So make sure that you're in the community. If you wanna sign up, the link's in the description below. Also, I want to recap that the foundation of every single good defense in Madden history is a blitz threat, some type of thing that is going to make the opponent uncomfortable in the pocket. That is the biggest thing in Madden, and honestly, that's one of the biggest things in real life. Another huge principle of defense is to try to make every single defense that you run look identical so that you can limit the amount of pre-snap tells that you're giving your opponent and force them to make the hard reads post-snap and living in that post-snap world as opposed to the pre-snap uh, pre world and giving away what you're doing pre-snap. So that's why pretty much we're always coming out. We're always showing blitz, slanting down. Typically, we're using this guy on the slot corner side. 
there's a there's a reason uh, why we're doing those adjustments specifically, uh, and then and then from there we're kind of building off of that as we kind of go through everything that we're doing. But we always want to make it look the same. For that reason, also don't like normally you in this year's game. I don't like moving my user a lot pre-snap. I like to literally just sit here, and we're just gonna go right, and we're just gonna go, and oh, we're over here. So I would rather. I just want to try to limit the pre-snap tells as much as possible. Another thing that I hope that you caught in this breakdown is adjustments are really important. Once you have a blitz, you are basically, uh, when we say blitzing is the foundation of defense, that means that it's like the cornerstone, it's the basics, it's the way in which defense has to be played. But what's important is it doesn't end there. We're not stopping at the blitz. Once we have the blitz, though, that is going to then inform everything we do from an adjustments perspective and coverage perspective. We have a good blitz in this four-man disengage, and then we build around the blitz all of these coverages that we taught you in this video, all of these adjustments that we taught you in this video that can stop some of the best players and some of the best offenses in the world. That being said, we are also adjusting based off of what our opponent is doing. Defense is trying to, ultimately what defense is trying to do is we're trying to bend but don't break. We're trying to make it hard, make it hard, force your opponent to play left-handed. You want to force your opponent to throw things that are hard. I like to teach to people to take away the layup throws, take away the deep one play touchdown stuff, and then take away the underneath and force your opponent. That's why you see so many setups with hard flats. And basically where I want you to have to beat me is I want you to have to beat me in this intermediate field, the intermediate field between 10 to 20 yards. If you can consistently beat me there, I feel like you're a top, top, top offensive player. Force them to beat you in the mid-range. No, don't give up layups and don't give up three-pointers. Force them to beat you in the mid-range game. That is so critical to how you play defense in this game and how you play defense literally every single year. You want to force your opponent to have to beat you in the mid-range. If you can force them to have to beat you in that mid-range game, it's way more likely that they're gonna you, that you could get a sack because it's gonna take a while for those routes to develop that they could make a bad read because number one, they're feeling pressure, but number two, it's a harder throw. It's a harder throw to make. Um, and it's also not as open. It's easy to take away. It's easy to uh, appear like the mid range is a lot more close. So I like to try to live in that mid range world. And then the, the last thing in my opinion is try to really make red zone defense as difficult as possible. Make them have to score inside the 10 because that is the hardest place to score in Madden because it is the most amount of space that is constrained. Offenses in general operate better with more space. The more space an offense has and the more space an offense creates, the better they are going to operate. Defense is typically going to be better the less space you have to defend. The less space the offense has, the easier it is for the defense to defend it. So good offenses create space, good defenses constrain space. That is a huge principle and something that I really have tried to apply this year in a game that's very difficult to play defense. Let's be honest, it's very difficult uh, to play defense this year. So I hope that this little tutorial helped you guys. If you liked this video, I'll do more of these. And if you enjoyed this video and you're really serious about wanting to become a better Madden player, I'd love to have you in our school community. It's only $10 to sign up. You can sign up by clicking the link in the description below.